So let's just recap what we've seen so far. If little g is the complexified Lie algebra of a compact semi-simple group, then uh, little g splits as a direct sum of little h plus a direct sum of root spaces g alpha, where alpha runs over the roots. So here, little h is the complexified, uh, complexified Lie algebra of the maximal torus, particular choice of maximal torus. Um, and g alpha is the set of x in little g, such that um, add h x equals alpha of h x for all h in little h. So alpha is a root that lives in this um, thing I was calling little h r star vector space. It actually lives inside the root lattice, inside sorry, the weight lattice inside this, but let's not worry about that for the moment. So over here I've drawn the root diagram of SU3. So this is inside um, a two-dimensional uh, vector space, little h r dual. So the roots are uh, these points that I've drawn at the vertices of this hexagon, and then there's also the zero root space. And what we've been doing is gradually seeing that the sort of salient features of this particular diagram carry over much more generally to this setting uh, for any group. So what are the nice features um, that we've observed so far? So, so far we've seen that uh, roots occur in pairs. So if alpha is a root, then so is minus alpha. So each root occurs with an opposite root. We've seen that if x is in g alpha and y is in g minus alpha, then um, x, y, and their Lie bracket span a subalgebra of little g, isomorphic to little sl2c. So I'm going to give this a name, I'm going to call it S alpha. Part way through the proof of this, we showed a useful lemma, which I'm also going to state here, which was that x bracket y equals k x y times alpha sharp, where alpha sharp is the killing form dual of alpha, of the root alpha. So alpha sharp is an element of little h which is dual to alpha under the killing form. And while we were proving this uh, property that we had a subalgebra, we actually used some slight rescaling of alpha sharp. Um, we defined h alpha, I think we just called it h at the time, but let's stick an alpha there now, to be two alpha sharp over k alpha sharp alpha sharp. This was the guy that satisfied um, the nice bracket relations h bracket x equals 2x and h bracket y equals minus 2y um, assuming that we had uh, oh and sorry x bracket y equals h. This was assuming that uh, k x, y was equal to 2 over k alpha sharp alpha sharp. So we could just rescale y to get that. So what I'm going to do in this video is show that another nice property of this diagram carries over to this more general setting, uh, namely the fact that these root spaces are all one-dimensional. So remember here, this root space was generated by E13, this was generated by E12, E3, 1, etc. They're all one dimensional, and that's going to be true in this compact semi simple setting as well. 
So here's the idea. I'm going to look at this line through my favorite route and through the origin. So let's say this is alpha here. This is the origin. I pick the line through alpha and the origin. And I'm going to sum some of the uh, weight spaces or the root spaces along this line. But instead of taking everything, I'm just going to take um, the span of H alpha here, and then I'm going to take the root space for root alpha, the root space for root 2 alpha, and minus alpha, minus 2 alpha, etc., and over all possible integers. So here's, here's the statement. If I define V to be the span of H alpha plus uh, the direct sum of GK alpha where K is a non-zero integer, then this is a representation of S alpha. In other words, if I act using um, add X, add Y, and add H alpha, then I preserve this subspace. And moreover, it's irreducible. And this is the key thing, because if it's irreducible, that's going to tell me that all the weight spaces here are one dimensional. In particular, all the all these root spaces, G, K, alpha, are going to be one dimensional. So first of all, let's prove that it is actually a representation. Then we'll figure out the uh, weight space decomposition. I need to prove that if I apply add x to any of these vectors, I get something else in this subspace. And then the same for add y and add h alpha. I'll just do it for add x because the others are the same sort of idea. So add x h alpha equals x bracket h alpha. Well, that's minus 2x if you look up here. So that lives in g alpha which is one of the things I'm summing over in my vector space. So that's contained in V. If I apply add X to one of these vector spaces, uh, G, K, alpha, well, then the weight gets shifted by a further alpha because X is in G alpha. So this is a subset of G, K plus one alpha. And that's again inside V as long as uh, K plus one is not zero. Because if K plus one is zero, that's uh, then G K plus one alpha is G zero. And that's not one of the things we're summing over. So we need to be a bit careful about that. Uh, so let's deal with that case separately. If I apply add X to an element of G minus alpha, a priori, all I get is that it's contained in G0, but actually we know something slightly more. So I said earlier on, if X is in G alpha and Y is in G minus alpha, then what we actually proved was X bracket Y is a multiple of alpha sharp, which is a multiple of H alpha. So actually add X of G minus alpha is contained in the span of H alpha, which is a subset of G0, but it's not the whole thing. And that's certainly contained in our vector space. So add X preserves V, and it's a sub-representation. So why is it irreducible? So we're going to write down the weight space decomposition um, and from that, it will become clear that it's irreducible. So what is the weight space decomposition? Well, I claim that uh, G K alpha is, um, or has uh, weight to K for the action of H alpha. So why is that? Well, H alpha of, let's give this thing a name, Z uh, in little g k alpha. Well, because Z is in uh, little g k alpha, uh, this is just k alpha of 
H alpha Z. Um, and so this is because Z is in G K alpha. And alpha of H alpha is, let's go back up, what was H alpha again? H alpha is two alpha sharp over K alpha sharp alpha sharp. So this is alpha of two alpha sharp over K alpha sharp alpha sharp. So that's two over K alpha sharp alpha sharp of alpha alpha sharp. And the way alpha sharp was defined was in such a way that K alpha sharp V equals alpha of V for all V. So in particular, K alpha sharp alpha sharp equals alpha of alpha sharp. So this bit cancels with this bit and we just get two. So this is two K Z. So Z is therefore in the weight space with weight two K with respect to this H alpha. So this is now the weight space decomposition um, of S alpha this SL2C sub-representation. Okay, so our weight diagram looks like this. We have G minus two alpha, G minus alpha, CH alpha, that's weight zero, G alpha, so this is weight two, weight minus two, weight minus four, etc. And then going up, we have G two alpha, which would be weight four, etc. And this guy in the middle is one dimensional. Okay, so what we can do is we can decompose this as a direct sum of irreducibles, but those irreducibles are all gonna have a one dimensional weight space in weight zero, because they're all for even weights. And therefore we can only have one of them because we've only got one dimension in weight zero to play with. So this implies that this is irreducible. All right, you imagine if you're stacking lots of irreducible representations, direct summing them, the weight diagrams would stack on top of one another and that middle bit would become very tall. We get lots of dimensions in that zero weight space.